Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. Be the difference in someone's life today. Phone 1-800-257-296 or visit catholicmission.org.au. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And I welcome all of those joining us at Mass for You at home. I invite you spiritually to bring to the altar of God all of your needs. And as we begin our Mass, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbour, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. Since he will be looked after, we have his word for it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony, and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure, it also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy. So, you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. And when you do pray for it and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God has called us with the gospel to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, our Lord. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about along the road? They said nothing because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel today really involves two stories. Firstly, Jesus instructs the disciples that he will be put to death and rise again. We'll come back to that theme. Secondly, Jesus is preparing his closest collaborators, the Twelve, for their mission to carry on his work. Jesus questions them about who is the greatest. Their silence betrays embarrassment. They'd been arguing along the road, yet they'd been with Jesus long enough to understand he's not impressed by rank or status. To be missionary disciples, they need to choose between power and glory on the one hand, or the humiliation and suffering symbolised by taking up the cross. The abuse of power is often at the heart of evil. As the second reading from the letter of St James says, jealousy and ambition cause disharmony, but the peacemaker sows seed that bears fruit in holiness. Mother Teresa of Calcutta had a saying, the fruit of silence is prayer, the fruit of prayer is faith, the fruit of faith is love, the fruit of love is service, and the fruit of service is peace. 
We all want to experience peace, but sometimes we find the circumstances of life can be troublesome rather than peaceful, which brings us back to the first part of the gospel story. When Jesus told the disciples that he would be put to death and rise again, they didn't understand what he meant and they were afraid to ask. Fear is the first enemy of faith. Perhaps they were afraid to accept that suffering would be a necessary part of life. Suffering, as we know, can take many forms. There might be cases of strained relationships, alienation from loved ones, and then there are the various disappointments in life, not achieving some ambition, missing out on an opportunity, as well as the physical sufferings that can come from illness or old age, and sometimes the mental suffering that can accompany loneliness and isolation from other people. As you know, Cardinal George Pell spent over 400 days in prison and he wrote a diary reflecting on his situation. He referred often in his diary to watching Mass for You at home, but many times he refers to suffering and the Christian belief that suffering has value. Can I just quote one sentence from his diary? Jesus' passion was not productive from any worldly sense, a painful waste of time. Yet Jesus' suffering was redemptive and can purify and vivify my suffering. When things are hard for us, we can join Jesus' own suffering. And most especially as people of faith, we look forward to the resurrection and the promise of eternal happiness. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us call out to God in prayer for the Lord listens to those who call his name. That the church in Australia will listen to the wisdom that comes from above as we prepare for the first assembly of the plenary council. In your mercy. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who suffer cruelty or torture for their beliefs will be rewarded for their endurance. In your mercy. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we will put aside ambition and evil desires and place our trust in the Lord. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, your wisdom brings us peace and hope. Hear these prayers and help us to serve others, that we may be great in your sight. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know I am. 
Now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. We pray now together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm Brian Mascord. I'm the Bishop of Wollongong. I invite you to consider, if you are able to, to provide financial assistance to help extend the 50-year legacy of Mass for You at Home. Thank you and God bless.